Are you someone considering selling your home, cashing out, taking the money and running because you feel like there's a top in the market, a housing crash could happen, and you could potentially lose all of that equity? Maybe you're someone that went through the last housing debacle during 2006, 2007. You saw house prices reach new all-time highs, and then you saw them plummet because of the housing crash and you don't want to lose your potential equity. I currently have a lot of sellers reaching out to me at the moment asking, should I sell now or should I wait until the spring? In today's video, we're gonna dive into those questions that I ask those sellers when they talk to me about wanting to sell their property. Hopefully, it'll provide you with a little clarity and help you in making the decision if you're someone on the fence about potentially selling your home. Now, the very first thing I ask a potential seller when they ask me if they should sell now or wait is sell and do what? What is your plan? Are you planning on selling and buying another property? Are you planning on selling and renting? Are you planning on selling, sitting on the sidelines with the hopes that there's going to be another housing crisis and that home prices are going to plummet and that you're going to be able to purchase something for much less? Because all of those things should come into play when considering whether or not you should sell your home now or wait. The very next question I ask is what do you gain by waiting? Right, So we're going to address those questions to begin with, sell and do what? We're going to address the questions of what do you gain by waiting? And we're also going to talk about some things that you should consider that maybe you're not if you're thinking of selling your house right now. But before we dive into those, I wanna take a minute and introduce myself. My name is Jeb Smith. I'm a real estate broker here in Southern California. My channel's all about real estate, helping guide you through that process, whether you're buying, whether you're selling, whether you're an investor or just somebody watching the housing market just to keep up to date. Do me a favor, if you find any value in this content at all, if you hate this mustache, hit that thumbs up. And also feel free to subscribe if you wanna stay updated on everything real estate related. Now the very first question I ask is what's your plan? Sell and do what? You have to have a plan, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if your plan is to rent a property, what I would suggest prior to listing your home on the market is going out and seeing if you can actually find a property that is a suitable rental replacement for you. I have a lot of clients that have reached out to me this year. My wife and I have also considered potentially selling our house, not because we think it's the top of the market, but be because we want to buy something else. We wanna have that money liquid so that when the right property does come up, we're in a position to make an offer quickly, not have to deal with contingencies or cashing out equities or what have you. But when we go to look at the market with regards to rentals, we see nothing, and, and what we do see is garbage, right? We want to find something that's close to what we're living in now and not pay an arm and a leg for it. And the reality is, when you're actually out there looking, there are very few rentals even available, especially in our market. It's as competitive as the housing market. In fact, I had a lease listing just a couple of weeks ago, and we had 10 applicants on that property within 48 hours of opening viewing. So the rental market is in high demand, and that's something that you have to factor in if you're considering selling your home and renting something. Can you actually find something that suits what you're looking for at a reasonable budget? Are you going to have to compete for it? Is there a chance that you don't get it? Then what? And if you're considering selling your property and maybe buying something else or even renting something else in another market, maybe your plan is to move out of state. Have you spoken to an agent in that state? Have you started looking at properties in that state? Because a lot of housing markets are very, very competitive at the moment, right? A lot of people have this idea that they're gonna sell at a very high price and then they're gonna move to a market that is more affordable. Well, that's great if you can actually find property that's more affordable and that you don't have to get in bidding wars and bid above the asking price and get in these crazy situations. So the reality is you need to make sure before you put your home on the market and get an offer in escrow that you actually have a plan, whether it's local, whether it's out of state, what have you have something to stick to so that you know exactly what's going on. I've had clients in the past put their homes on the market with the idea that they were gonna to try to find a replacement property and after going into escrow, they realized really quickly they can't find a replacement property, they can't even find a rental, 
And so they're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place in deciding on whether they decide whether they move forward with selling their home or whether they just take it off the market and keep it. And I've had clients go both directions. So make sure if you're considering cashing out of your property that you have that plan. The next question we talked about is what do you gain by waiting? Are your expectations that if you wait until the spring market that you're going to get more money? Because predicting the future of real estate is very, very difficult. What I tell most clients is you know what's happening in the market right now. You know where interest rates are. You know where inventory is. You know what demand is doing. So you know exactly what to expect if you put your home on the market at fair market value. Now, if we wait until the spring market, what happens then? You've got a lot of factors that could come into play. You could have interest rates go up, which could affect buyer demand. You could have a ton of inventory come on the market, which I don't think is likely, but anything's possible. You had Zillow come out yesterday trying to sell 7,000 homes that they purchased to one potential buyer. So what if a buyer buys those properties and says, you know what? We don't really want these properties. We're gonna put all these properties on the market. And what if you're in one of those markets that has a ton of these properties that were originally purchased by Zillow and they all come on the market at one time and there's this big uptick in inventory. That could affect your potential purchase price on your property, what you actually get for that home. So what I tell clients is a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You know exactly what's going on right now and if you're willing to risk that with the expectation that you might get more in the future, then great. Now the other side of that is if you're waiting because you know there's a plan because you know your your new property is going to be available or you're moving or you're relocating or there's something that's drawing you to next year where it works out better with your schedule you know i'm one of those people that if you've been watching my channel for any period of time i don't believe there's a housing crash coming i don't believe you're going to have much change with regards to supply and demand in the short term which means you know the next six months or so so to me, the market's going to look a lot like it does in, in at the early part of next year as it does now. But again, we don't know how those factors are going to come into play, and that could ultimately impact the price of your property. So take that into account if you're planning on waiting. Now the next part is some of the questions that I ask sellers when they're thinking about selling their property because often these aren't things that they take into account when putting their home on the market. And the first is, are you going to have any capital gains? What's capital gains? Capital gains is when you sell your property, you actually pay a tax to the government over and above whatever your baseline is. What does that mean? Well, if you're an individual, you get $250,000 in a capital gains exemption and $500,000 if you're married. So if you purchased a property, let's just say hypothetically for $500,000 and now you're selling it for 1.5 million, right? That's a million dollars more than you purchased it for, then you get up to $500,000 tax-free as a married couple. So you get up to a million dollar base, not taking into account any improvements you've done to that property, any money you've put into it to upgrade it, etc. So let's just say purposes of this conversation, you've done $100,000 in remodeling to that property. So that means your base on that property would be 1.1 million, but there's still $400,000 that's not accounted for. And that would require that you pay taxes on that 400,000. So instead of selling your home for, for a million and a half and, and saying, let's just say you owe 500,000 for, for this conversation, instead of getting a million dollars, you're actually going to get less, right? Because you're having to pay taxes on that gain. So keep that in mind when actually selling your property. You know, are you going to get the full amount of that or are you gonna to have to pay taxes on it? If so, how much tax are you gonna to have to pay? How much are you actually gonna walk away with? Because some people are thinking, hey, I'm gonna sell my property for this high amount and go buy something cash in another state and then when it comes down to it, after they pay taxes and do all of that, they don't actually have the full amount that they thought they were gonna have initially. And another question I'm asking people at the moment is if you're planning on selling and waiting for the market to pull back, what is your plan if the market doesn't pull back? Are you still a buyer? Are you someone that's going to rent forever? Are you okay with that? Are you in a position to potentially move out of state if, if you, know, you can't afford something in the state that you live in? These are all things you need to consider. And the reason I bring this up is because I have clients going back several years. 2019 rings a bell because I have some clients that are still sitting on the sidelines. They sold in 2019 with the thought that the housing market was gonna correct at that time. And they thought 
they were going to be able to buy something for much less. And here they are, two years later, home prices up over 40% in some markets since that time frame, and they're priced out of the market. They're no longer potential buyers in my market. If they wanted to purchase at this point, they would have to move out of state. So now they've become renters and renting has actually cost them more money. Their rent has gone up. They're not getting the tax write-offs that they had before. They're not getting the forced savings of owning a property. So these are all things you need to consider when potentially selling your home. You need to have a plan. It sounds great that you're going to put your home on the market, but it's a catch-22 if you actually have to buy something else, right? If you already have another home and you need to sell your home, great. It's a good opportunity to do that and take advantage and capitalize on the market. But if you're in a position where you're going to take that cash and buy something else, rent something else, these are things you need to factor in when going through that process. Now, after watching this, if you're someone that's still a seller, you're considering selling your home, you know, we wanna talk about strategies on how to price it, go through the process, all of that stuff, do me a favor, check out this video here. I actually talk about selling a home, walking you through that process. But for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate all the support. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day, bye-bye.